What's up everybody? It's Caius here. It's been a bit since I made a Poe build guide. I think it's been about two leagues as I played a lot of Heist and I didn't play so much Ritual. Um, I kind of got burnt out last league and then I was also having wrist issues. But today I'm going to showcase a build that I've played before but I've tuned and made a lot better. Um, it's one that's been very, very good in Ultimatum League. I played it as my second build. I started with Blade Blast Assassin, and even being dodge capped and having pretty good gear and survivability, I felt there were times it was just squishy for Ultimatum. So I decided to revive the unarmed Hollowed Palm Cyclone Impale. Um, this is a build that I decided to bring back and start talking about because I've had people message me, random people in game, saying they saw me on the boards and they wanted to kind of get an, an idea of how to do the build and how good it was. And I've had people come into the Twitch stream lately asking about the build and asking how to start it. So the first thing I'll say, it's not a starter build. It can't be any league. You'd have to start it as like a two-hand impale. The Hollow Palm does take a little bit of investment, but it's not as hard as people think. Now, the build is as simple as it sounds. You cyclone around, you pretty much have a pretty big area, you're moving around, and you're dropping impales. And you're getting a ton of skill damage off your dexterity stat. That's where all your damage comes from. So, it's as simple as that. So pretty much hold, right click, go, drop an occasional war chief, maybe flame dash, you have blood rage. Not too many buttons. It's pretty smooth for ultimatum. As a build like this, one of its greatest survivable traits is being able to do damage while moving. And it has a pretty good amount of HP, pretty good defenses. So, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of the build. I will say the pros are it's a quick farmer. It's very good versus trash. It's very good versus bosses. Uh, pretty survivable. Uh, this is a softcore character, though. There could be hardcore tweaks made if you found the gear in a hardcore trade league. Or if you got lucky enough to find it in Solo Southbound. Um, overall, it's just it feels solid. It feels good. It seems to handle most of the content well. Now, the cons of the build are you have limited gem sockets. And as we'll go into why, uh, you also have limited resist spots. So you're cramming resists and gems into a few pieces of gear. Unlike where you'd normally have a lot more. So, we're going to go right to the gear. I'll do a demo later, and we'll talk all about like leveling and such too, and I'll show the POB. I'll link that in the description as well. So, the first thing we got is this. So, as you can see, we don't have a weapon, we don't have a shield, we don't have gloves. Now, the reason that is, is we are using a cluster jewel called Hollow Palm. So, this is what the build is made around, so we're going to talk about this first. So, it says you count as dual wielding while you're unencumbered. You get 60% more attack speed, which is a great multiplier while you're unencumbered. And then you get 14 to 20 added physical attack damage per 10 decks while unencumbered. Unencumbered means you cannot use gloves, a main hand, or an offhand. So our damage primarily comes from stacking decks. So if we go ahead and look at the gear, I'll kind of go through what you could start with and what we'd go into. So to start the build, um, I pretty much told people there's three pieces you need to start it and then you can work into the rest later. So the first thing is the wild wrap strap leather. Now, as you can see, it gives you dex, attack speed, it gives you damage per dex, has some resist and movement speed. Now it doesn't have life, but life won't be an issue due to the boots, which I'll show in a second. Um, this chest, what's good about it, they run for around 70 chaos. I paid 80 for an identical one just before the stream, but it came with the correct colors. Because you need three red, two green, and a blue. Now, this is your best endgame chest as far as damage. There is nothing you can get that I saw on a redeemer chest or anything like that. Even if you got like dex percent, and you got a dex roll, and you crafted attribute, it won't compete. Now, there is the option of later going for one of those chests if you want to get a little bit more survivability like life and such. That is completely fine. But for the most part, I always stick with this chest. It's great, it's cheap, they're easy to buy, they're good double crut fodder. And that is pretty much your chest for 70C. As for coloring it, as the colors are odd because it is a green chest, um, I did Harvest. You could also do the three 
color chromes from uh, a delve that you get. If you get that, you could just hit maybe two, two red and a blue maybe. I'd check the calculator, but that's what you could do there. Um, you can also get white sockets for Vrici, which I got some here. But these were already after I had the colors I needed. So that is your chest, about 70C. That's your starter, and then you can go into another chest later. Now the second starter item, I would say are the boots. Now these have gone up since I bought them. I bought them early in the league, and they were like 40 chaos. They're now about 100. And these come with a little bit of dex. Uh, you get the immune to burning shock to chilled ground, which is great. Um, the regen doesn't matter, which because we have Val Pact. And then what's cool is you're getting life per dex. This build right now, I have about 1,000 dex. We're getting about 200 flat life, which is pretty good. It makes it for the no life roll. And again, as you can see, I've already very skipped on resist because I don't have these. And I'm only getting resist to cold here. So you can imagine how much I'm cramming on other pieces, which I'll show you. So these boots, um, I would get them. Again, if you wanted to go for yellows, you could with like high life and maybe a dex roll. It would be fine. Um, and then maybe you could put some resist on it too. So these are cool. I haven't really messed with the yellows yet in the planner. After that, 30 Chaos Necklace, Astro Menace, just buy it. I divine mine like six times. I got a top roll. And uh, for the Anoint, we'll go into that later. But uh, you're going to you're gonna pretty much hit all your jewelry, jewelry as well with Attribute, as you can see, the 20%. So Astro Mentis. So pretty much if you buy an Astro Mentis, you buy a Hollow Palm, because I forgot that in the items as well. You buy the boots and the chest. You're roughly looking maybe two exalts, maybe a little less than that to start the build. And that's your starters. The rest of it could all come later. Now, as for the neck, um, there are upgrades. They're really hard, but I think I'll go into that later. We're just going to show what you can get right now. Now, the next decision um, is the helmet. Now, this is one that is a little tricky. So, I went for the Royal Burgonet base and these have gone up since so the big thing about this is getting a flesh and stone has 30 percent reduced reservation um it is needed to run every one of your auras without an enlighten in your sockets because the sockets are already tight so you can buy a white base of these for one exalt and this is something you can do later you don't have to have flesh and stone on right away i didn't put it on until like level 80 something when i was already deep in mapping um you can buy a white base and just spam it with uh sorrow essences preferably the top in one and these range between they're between 7 to 13 depending if you want to buy in bulk chaos each so you'll just hit it i hit it with like five or six i eventually got 47 decks um the 96 life and then i crafted straight the decks because i didn't need the resist again only one resist there but i have a lot spread out on jewels as well so there's a little bit of flexibility what else you could put on it but you simply want a helmet around that area. Just dex, life, and maybe some resist on it. Of course, some resist on it. So that's what we got there. Next, we got the belt. Now, for starting, you could just buy a Cyclopean coil. They're cheaper. I think a higher end rule one, like the 18% attribute with the catalyst, is like 1x. One, one They're not that bad. And it will hold you. Um, in this case, it's very similar. I bought a Stygian vice hunter influence the base just the base alone these are running 3x that's what you're gonna pay so i paid 3x and then again i spammed it with essence of sorrow i don't even want to say how many some leagues i get it in five some i get it in 50 i got it in like 40 something so we're talking like 400 chaos worth of essences until you get the attribute percent so i got dex attribute percent and i crafted life on it that was good enough because i didn't need the res and that's what we're running there and then for the socket I just wanted some Onslaught and some life, and I wanted a jewel I could quickly swap out uh, for Cirrus with a Corrupted Blood. Something very, very easy to swap in and out. Yeah, like this. Like, that's a very easy swap for Cirrus. You just swap in the belt, you're none. So that's our belt. Um, you need one heavy ring with resist. Now, I will say this. There's a couple ways to do this. So I got a very good ring with life, dex, resist. I paid about like 3 or 4x for that. And I had to change one of the resist with Harvest. Um, which keep in mind, if you resist, if you need like Lightning or you need like, like you need a Cold here, you could get a Harvest swap. So that, that makes it a little more flexible. But I got a lot of resist and this one happened to get Channeling and Fizz Mana. So with just one ring with Channeling and the way we have this set up, 
you actually have no cost to your Cyclone. But I was running this build until 93 without the channel cost, just the Mana Leech. And again, you can get the Mana Leech on a Jewel, you can get it on the Tree, or you can get it on the Ring. But you don't need both. You need one or the other in some form. So that's what we're running, and it seems to cover most of the resist. It gets us to where we got to go. Now, if we look at the second ring, uh, this one I YOLO annulled, and I had room for the life. So we put the maximum life on it, vulnerability, which is the curse of choice, uh, decent resist, and the dex. Now, you could buy a starter Voln ring that, that should get the job done for like maybe an exalt or two. You don't have to have it, it just helps the damage, so it's something to look forward to. And same here, you don't have to have the channel cost, uh, or even like the decks. If you can't get the decks right away, it's not a big deal, it's just work towards it later. Just start with the stuff that I, I outlined before and work your way towards it. But that's what we're working with there. For flasks, we just got your standard bleed uh, health flask. We have a jade, because we are hybrid evasion armor. We're doing a little bit of both. So we got our evasion armor. So that's our freeze flask. There's our roomies, which is our armor flask with block. Uh, we got a basalt, which is fizz DR, as well as a little bit more armor. And then we got our quicksilver. So that's what we're running. Now for skill gems, we're running a six link cyclone. So you get cyclone. Um, we're running a fuse channeling. Which we are buffing the infusion rate through the tree. I'll show you later. Uh, impale support. This is how we get our 100% impale. Uh, melee fizz. Brutality. And fortify. Those are what you want to run in there. Pretty solid. Pretty self-explanatory. Now for your first set of auras. We're running pride. Uh, we'll go into more importance. Why this is amazing. Like, it's already amazing. But there's a watcher's eye you can buy. That makes it next level. So we got pride. We got our Flesh and Stone, we got Maim, attached to Flesh and Stone to make the Maim effect better. And we got the Dread Banner, which also helps complete out our Impale. And then on the bottom here, we have a Blood Sand, and we have a Blood Rage, and we have Flame Dash, and Ancestor Warchief. So that's what we're running for gems. Now, if we go to the tree, we're a Slayer. So... Pretty much what we're trying to pick up is we're trying to cap it pale, we're trying to get life, we're trying to pick up decks. That is our main motives on this tree, and then we pick up one cluster, which we'll go over that really quick. So, for the clusters, you're going to want a large uh, physical attack damage one. Now, if you get two of the notables, that's fine. If you get three, greater, great. But this one is a must. You want Masters of the Fundamental. Uh, the resists are tight, so this helps you kind of like tone out your resist a little bit. It'll give you that 10 to all, which is great. Um, there's Force Multiplier, which I like, but if you can't get it, that's fine. It's also good. And then there's Exploit Weakness. So, helps our vulnerability a little bit more damage. So, this is just straight up damage. Um, if you can get a fourth affix on it, since it's a suffix, if you can get dex or resist, great. Uh, go with that. Then we're running two mediums. So the issue with Cyclo, because we're not taking the Slayer can't be stunned while leeching, um, you have to come up with stun immunity. So we run two medium clusters uh, that are channel clusters, and they each have unwavering focus. So between both, we're getting an 80% chance to avoid getting stunned while channeling, increase our damage, and that reduced cost, we're getting a total of 30, helps make it so we don't need two rings if you want to go the minus channel route. And then on one, we have Rapid Infusion, which is just a little bit of extra infusion effect and movement speed. And then we also have Enduring Focus, which gives us Endurance Charges while channeling. Um, I chose to go with this. You don't have to. They're about an Exalt right now. But I got a Fettle. It came with Dex as well. Add a little bit of Resist to the Small. So Fettle just for a lot of life. And then we got our one with nothing, Hollow Palm. Cluster Jewel. And uh, for other Jewels, again, like right there, we're... Getting some resist, I need some fire and lightning, I want to build a little bit of life, a little bit of dex, so we picked up that jewel. We got another one up here, this one has a lot more resist, this is how we got our, got away without having the other pieces for resist, between the ring and the jewels pretty much. Uh, we got the overwhelm and the max life, and then we go and pick up this jewel, which I just bought, this is 13x, I literally just bought it before stream uh, today. Um, you don't have to have this. I would, it's, it's gonna, like, you already do a shit ton of damage. Like, this build is killing everything. Um, but it will help a lot, so I picked it up, and we just put it in, and we will see. Now, if for some reason you can't afford that, which I understand you can't, 
or it's not something you want to do later, you could simply just put the points of this chain of wheel down here. It's pretty good damage. It's put pretty close, but it's good. But more or less, um, how the tree works, guys, I'll kind of give you what I did for leveling. So for leveling, we started up here, and we followed this as quick as we could right down to the jewel socket. And as soon as we got it, we put one with nothing in. Hollow palms activated. You get rid of your weapons. You get rid of your gloves. And your damage is going to be insane while leveling. Like, you're going to one-shot everything, and it's going to feel so clean. And as for the skill, you're going to just throw in an Infernal Blow. Should do fine. And as soon as you get Cyclone, you put in the Cyclone to start doing your links and your Tabula and so on. So you get one with nothing. You go down here. You can pick up, like, this Dextode. And then just start picking out the life. Get the area as you feel it. Get life when you need it. Uh, stuff like Fortify Effect, I waited on. Um, stuff like this, which is needed for the Reservation of Flesh and Stone, I waited on until later, until I got Flesh and Stone in. Wind Dancer, you can pick up Wind Convenient, it's a good DR. You want to grab this as quick as possible. And then you kind of just go around picking up life and getting jewels when you need the resist, get the cloth and chain. Like, try and get that resist done as quick as you can and get that life up. But, uh, this is it. I've, I've also had questions like, can this be a block build? It can. Like, with the roomies, you're sitting on 38 block. I'm sure you can cut some stuff around. This is a softcore build and try and pick a block. I just won't give the advice on that because, uh... I'm happy with how it is. Uh, it's been working for the most part. Um, we've, just to give you an idea, it's running T16 maps, no problem. Pretty much I don't even care about the mods. Like the only mods that really can't run with this setup is can't leech probably. But if I got life on hit on a ring, maybe I could run it then. But that's about it. Um, it can run no regen. Um, yeah, it just, it works. We want a very little bit of mana, but it's literally just for Flame Dash, Blood Rage, and War Chief, which are situational. And yeah, just that's that's about it. Just it's pretty self-explanatory. And then as soon as you can get these clusters, get them in because the resist again, and get these in. If you're worried about getting stunned, um, and you don't have the clusters, you could pick this up over here. It makes it so you have a fifty percent chance to avoid stun while channeling. So between this. And this is where we get our other stun immunity, by the way, our anointment. Lucidity, you're at 90, which is those two. So eventually, you're going to have Lucidity in the two clusters to be completely stun immune, have the damage, and the total cost, which also helps get us to zero. So that's what I would do there. As for Ascendancy, um, pretty straightforward. You can go which way you want. I personally went for this first. I liked getting the area, you're unarmed, so making the area big is important, and this is a good way to keep it up, so you're great there. Um, I think I then picked up this just to get the overleech going, which is a big part of your survivability. You're also going to take reduced damage while leeching. You also get the extra maximum recovery, and then that mixed with Val Pack is just insane. Um, and then we eventually went this route. And then you get the call, which is like the best thing. I've never really messed with the Slayer, but that 20% call just makes bosses so much easier. Now, for the most part, this build is going to do everything you need it to do. It does die sometimes. Like, there are sometimes I just don't look at an ID map tier 16. And then it had like Ellie Weakness and Minus Max. So that's one of the problems with the build. Is our chaos? I haven't had an issue with chaos. To be honest, like this, this doesn't bug me. I've run into chaos mobs, chaos bosses, uh, Sirius's conquerors. Nothing, nothing big there. We don't have an overcap. You're gonna get another twelve from enduring charges or endurance charges, but it doesn't seem to be a big deal most of the time. And I think out of like the hundred, probably tier sixteen ultimatums, with not even checking them out, just putting a map in like yellow, volleying it and going, I've died one time. But it's beaten Sirius. It's beaten Cortex. Uh, it's beating at Ziri, it's beating Uber at Ziri. Uh, we're about to fight Shaper and Elder today, and hopefully Uber Elder. Um, hopefully we get to Maven. I didn't get to try our last league, because the only issue with this build is it hurts my wrists after a while. Um, just might be me getting old, uh, so my wrist isn't as stable. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the build. And cool thing is, like, you have so much dex that you don't need accuracy anywhere. So your accuracy is capped. Like, if we look at my Cyclone... That's the tooltip right there, 345. That's before any buffs. That's just the tooltip. That's not like Path of Builder damage. Path of Builder shows you do it about 10 mil to Cirrus. If you put in a Lion's Roar, you're talking maybe 12 mil, somewhere around there. Uh, main hand hit chance are pretty good. Attacks per second, 10. That's before Blood Rage and all that. And 
Yeah, and Pale Chance 101. I, don't, I wonder why it's... Oh, it must be because the banner's a little bit better or something. Uh, Resistor at 76 when they aren't weakness, which is okay, because Adamant... Or Soul Seal, sorry. Um, block... We're at 18%, so you go to 38 and 10 spell block when you hit the flask. Um, I guess I can show you guys the POB. Let's show you the actual numbers. So these are the numbers. There's your DPS for Cirrus. Uh, just to show it, we'll make it bigger. So there's Cirrus down there. So you're looking at pretty good DPS there between the Impales and the Calls. Reserved mana. Life reach rate's pretty good, 24. And then... With Flask and stuff, you're sitting at a 75% Fizz reduction between everything. You're sitting at a 70% Evade chance, and if you get hit, Wind Dancer procs, and you get more. And, uh, yeah, for the most part, it cleans. And that's where I will leave that. We went through leveling. Um, and I guess we'll have, like, the What's Next column before I show gameplay. And I'll show gameplay, I promise. I just wanted to go through this. And, again, I'll have a link to the builder below. So... As for what's next, what I'm looking forward to doing this character next, like min-maxing, I'm probably going to buy a Shaper Redeemer base dex deck list, like Jade Amulet. They're like 36, I mean, they're, they're three exalts to buy one, and I'm going to probably just Essence spam it after catalysting it to try and get like dex mods on it, and hope for like dex percent, attribute percent dex, and then maybe get the 1% damage per dex. That is literally the only way you beat an Astro Menace if you get like all four of those mods for the most part. So that is one thing we're aiming for. Maybe a better belt. Um, other than that, I think I'm just going to start double corrupting these chests. That's it. But let me show some gameplay. Let me go into a map. Uh, what do we want to run? You know, I haven't done a Caldera yet. And for the ultimatums, guys, we really... You know what? Let's run a vulnerability just for the hell of it. Just to kind of show. So we have Vuln on us, but we'll see. And we have, I think, 60% less recovery. See, So these are two things that aren't ideal, but you know what? This build could usually deal with it. You can run pretty much most things the ultimate. So what we do is, for the most part, I stay in Sand Stance. We have a pretty big radius. It's giving us the blind. And then for harder stuff and bosses... You switch to Blood Stance, and you get a big bonus from the tree and from the... Didn't even break a sweat. And from the stance itself, because you're getting your blood and sand then. Which is just a big multiplier between the maim and all that. Pretty easy. Don't have to do much. I don't even put my War Chief down, really. I just bought the War Chief too. Like, this was doing most endgame really easily, and I didn't even have Val War Chief in. I was running Life Tap on Flame Dash just to make it easy. Okay, we're gonna go to Blood Stance now. And this is an ultimatum, pretty much. Doesn't really matter, like the Ice ones. Oh, get a little bit of lag. The Elemental ones don't seem to hurt that much. Uh, I avoid the lightning a little bit. I think that one does hurt a little bit. But pretty much the ice of fire. Don't mind. Um, there aren't many mods where I'm like, eh. They're going to do anything. Limit the arena. That's a very good one for this build. Just get things closer to you. That one's a very good one. 1,000% of mana. Use, take it as damage. We, like... Your mana cost is so low if you don't have the channel ring. That don't matter, and like when you eventually get none, no channel cost, it doesn't matter at all. Like don't even see the damage, to be, be honest. Ruin is completely fine to run. Okay, here's the fire one. But you're just so mobile that things don't really hit you, and you're evading, because you have evasion. You have a decent amount of armor. Good flash time, good block. Expiring buffs don't really matter. Oh, watch us, watch us get, watch us get what's his face, 
Chaos with the fucking vulnerability. Me have to do that. That'd be funny. I fought him twice. This guy's beaten Chaos twice, by the way. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Fire yep. Here we go. Spreads. What are the odds of that, guys? I got him with vulnerability. See, that's a tier 16 vulnerability. And my service continues. Chaos laughs, <laughs> mortal. And fortune is yours. Wow, that's really good. But yeah, that's a loot too. We got a fra Phoenix Fragment too. Nice. But I mean, that shows you the build, guys. Like, that is, that is like how fucking... Oh, wow. Nearby enemies are crushed. Cool. That's funny, we got chaos for the video. That's my third one. The first one I did to him, I got a... Uh, Ivory Tower 6 Link. Very, very lucky, but... Detonates, we're just gonna get away from that. Yeah, we're just gonna switch. See, we just literally one-shot the boss. Like the mini-boss, I should say. <laughs> And we don't even, we're not even putting War Chief down. It's just, it's there. It's going to be great for, like, certain bosses, but... we will put it on Cam. Yeah, this is the first character I might aim for 100 for. I played this game on and off since um, 2012, when it was in beta. Three days before Diablo 3 came out. That's when I, when I pretty much played it. Okay, Maven came down. That's it, guys. That's, uh, that's pretty much the build, to be honest. That's it. There isn't too much about it. Um, I stream every day on... Twitch.tv slash Kaius3. That's uh, K-A-I-I-I-U-S-3. Um, I'll put that in the description as well. I don't necessarily play Poe every day. Um, it just depends on how my wrist is feeling. But uh, I'm always there for questions. If anyone needs help with builds or suggestions, feel free to ask. Other than that, I uh, appreciate everyone who does check out the video. And I hope some people get some uh, use out of it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you all. Have a good one.